Hey, Tommy from The Run Testers. Very soon we're gonna be releasing our best running shoes guide, which is one of our biggest videos uh, that comes out across the year. In this video, which is also the podcast, we're running through all of the categories in the guide and talking about the shortlist of shoes that we've all picked to see why we've picked them and give a bit of an idea of the process that we have in order to choose the shoes in the full guide. This video is also part of the podcast, so if you're planning on listening to the podcast, don't watch this video. And also be warned, it does spiral into a bit of nonsense chat by the end of it. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so we are about to do our best uh, running shoes video which is by far our most popular video on the channel uh, where we talk about all the different road shoe categories and we pick our top three picks and some additional um, options that you can look for from all of these different categories um, so what we're going to do in in this video or podcast is talk through all of the options that we've got talk through the categories and give a bit of an overview of why we've chosen the ones that we're looking at and for what reasons we put things in these categories basically uh is that clear yeah first question to yeah. answer is why are we doing it in july people always ask that oh yeah, it's yeah a year so, since we did the last one so yeah that's one so big reason. the reason we do this in july is because in one because we do the awards in at the end of the year which is all of the shoes that come out over the course of the year um uh, but the main thing reason we do it is because there's so many shoes that come out over the course of the year by the time we get halfway through the year we've already tested an awful lot of shoes um and if we leave it until the end of the year to do it and do the best shoes of the year, nobody watches that video because they're all trying to watch best shoes of 2025 by the time that comes around and it no longer it means anything. It's also not just the best shoes of this year. It's the best shoes in these categories. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the picks will be older shoes. Yeah, and the awards so, is just for the ones in the year. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Also, you want to buy a shoe in 2024? Yeah. Good to know about it in July, I think. Yeah, basically you get two, <laughs> you get, you get two videos. One, one is the best shoes video, which comes out now, and then you get the awards that comes out at the end of the year. So you get two videos covering the best shoes that are coming out. Not fair? It's very fair, Tom. Excellent. Okay, so let's start by looking at the first category. So how this works is uh, we all uh, vote, uh, give, give our top three shoes in a category, and then I work out based on a point system which one is first, second. Very shady third. point system. It is shady and it's quite biased. <laughs> it's an algorithm. Uh, There's an algorithm that no one understands. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of votes get nullified in the old algorithm. A lot of lost votes. <laughs> uh, well, the first one that uh, we do is the big one, and that is best ratio. Um, which is probably the most obvious category to talk through, but uh, somebody want to pick up how, what is the best ratio and how we pick it? It's got to be a carbon. It's a good year for it this year because we've all done marathons. We've all raced lots. And it's, yeah, we just pick the shoe we like racing in the most, which is now always a carbon plate shoe. I think it always has, actually, since the start of our channel. It's always been carbon, hasn't it? Don't think we ever. Mm, yeah. 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 So we, this will be we, from any year. But and is, it, is it fair to say we, we kind of think in. It does cover other races, but a lot of these would be marathon worthy. Well, I think most, well, especially this year when the, probably the big target for most of us first off is a marathon. And then even like your big target second off the year, Kieran, you're probably not as fussed about the shoe so much as the experience, I guess. Um, whereas, yeah, when you go chasing a time in the marathon, we, yeah, we are quite marathon focused, it's fair to say. Yeah. Um, but nearly all these shoes work for short distances as well. Yeah, and it's it, it's it's quite general as well because we do have other videos throughout the year where we talk about specific distances and things like that. So this is more personal preference towards if you could only pick one race shoe for your running career, which would you which would you go for? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. All right, so I am going to go through some of the options we've got, and we're going to talk through them. How's that sound? Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, so one that's cropped up a lot. Is the <laughs> Asics Meta Speed Sky Paris, um, and I think yeah, it's safe to say every we've all tested that now. I think yeah, uh, two marathon PBs in that shoe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. So I think yeah, two of us set PBs in it, so it get, get quite yeah. clear clear vote, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably safe to say that that, that shoe has probably been the the most surprising in a good way shoe this year. It's really. Every time any of us have used it, we've gone, wow, Asics has really done a good job with this shoe. They've really um, developed what they had previously and, and and really improved it. Yeah, it's a sensational shoe. And we just started testing the Edge, which at the moment, 
we feel we're probably, I think me and Mike are testing it, we're probably leaning still towards the Sky, even though I think we're both edge runners according to ASICs, but the Sky feels yeah. a little bit special still. And, they, and they're, they're almost merging into the same shoes, yeah. so I think it probably says a lot about where things might go, but I think my experience has been so far that, you know, the Sky feels like the standout shoe and feels like it offers something slightly different from the um, Edge Paris so far. I also like about the Sky in general is that it's exceptionally light, and I think that will hopefully prompt other people to start pushing their carbon shoes in that direction because I really like a light racing shoe, even if it is going to be big and bouncy. You can make it really light, as Asics has shown, and Puma's done now as well, and even Nike's racing shoes are getting lighter while they make the rest of their shoes heavier. So, yeah, I like that trend. Okay. Another shoe that's cropped up quite a lot in this in this list is the Alpha Fly 3. Um, and I, I, to be honest, I'm not... I, I've talked about this a lot. I much prefer the Alphafly 1. I actually found it tricky to choose shoes for this one because there's not many I've tested the past year that I really, really liked. But the Alphafly 3 did crop up quite a bit. What are our thoughts on the Alphafly 3 so far? Well, right, just I'm still it. yet to wonder. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I Over to Nick. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty great. I think it's. Very, I was very surprised when I tested that shoe. I didn't think there'd be anything I'd like more than that this year. But then, the uh, yeah, obviously, the Asics Metaspeed Sky Paris has come along. The Alphafly is fantastic. I think it's bouncy, springy. AirPods give it that extra punch. Smoother ride than past Alpha Flies. Yeah, you trade some of the bounciness of the Alphafly 1, but you get, I think, a faster turnover for someone like myself, who is a high-cadence runner. I think it's a brilliant shoe. would be very happy if uh, that would be my race shoe all year long after testing it. I've done a lot of miles in it now, some really hard sessions, I've raced in it, but I think it's a spectacular shoe. I, I think it's the best shoe Nike has made, but the Alphafly 1 is still pretty special as well mm. okay and i think you and me i know mike you've got you've tested the vape fly as well i have yeah so the vape fly's cropped up obviously quite a bit vape fly still sticking around list isn't it? <laughs> yeah um so vape fly why why is that on the list um go on mike um i mean i think and i, I probably i guess got other guys who t- test it i think it's a shoe whenever i put on and i've wanted to run quick in or race in it's felt amazing to do so it gives you all that you would want from a from a racing shoe it's very it's, you know the upper in terms of the weight i think in terms of that kind of propulsive feel you want over this you know over the short and even a little bit longer distances in it as well too uh, you know i've just always if i've wanted if there's a shoe I've, I've looked to for running or racing a little bit quicker you know i've never been disappointed putting this um shoe on and i think that's why it's still around and kind of in this in discussion about kind of racing shoes Still the shoe I see the most at races around me as well, like it's either Vaporfly 2 or if they've gone through those, Vaporfly 3. I think it's still got that, that's still got that hold and reputation with runners and it's not disappointing them at all. So, I, th- I think they opened it up. They made it slightly more cushioned as well, which I think makes it a bit more accessible for probably a wider group of runners. But for me, I'm, I, I'm at sort of the opposite end. I, I kind of think they softened it too much and I think they took the, the fast edge off it, which is what I really like actually about the the Sky Paris, it just feels a bit like the old Vaporfly 2 used to feel. Um, the Vapor just lost a bit of its edge for me, but I know why people like it. I think it gives you a little bit more protection later into races if things aren't going particularly well. So I'm not surprised that lots and lots of people now lace it up across the kind of different pace ranges. All right. Okay, so no surprises there. Um, we should uh, with big, big throw a bone at the Hocus Yellow X1, which I think has been one of the most surprising yeah. and enjoyable shoes. That year. has been mentioned. The shoe I've done the most miles yeah. in this year, probably, I think, mm. just because I used it for so many training sessions because it's such a fun, fast, bouncy shoe. Yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, a lot of my bigger kind of London Marathon train runs was in that shoe, and um, it was just enjoyable to go out on there. I mean, I don't love everything about it, I've, you know, and I think... Nick, you've had some, you know, interesting experience with the lacing, I think, which is quite clear. There's maybe something that needs to be rectified for a, a, a next version. But I think in terms of what you're getting, in terms of that ride, in terms of experience, in terms of being out and just kind of, you know, getting through that mileage in that shoe, it just feels like a really nice shoe to get. You know, and I've never felt like my legs have been wrecked after running in that shoe. And I think, you know, it, yeah, Hawkers had a good year. I think they've had some very strong shoes and the Cielo X one is definitely one of their kind of standout shoes from this year. Do we think that the uh, Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 3 is going to appear? I mean, it's. I think if we get a couple of races in, I think I want to, mm. you know, you still want to see those results, don't you? That's the problem with racing shoes. You need to race in them to really learn to love them or what you think about them. But I've, 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 there's nothing I haven't liked about it yet. 
Yeah, I've done a fi- I've done I did a five k race in it, um, and I, I did I, what I really want to see how it's kind of hand going to handle over longer distances. But I think I just got a good sense of what it's going to offer, and it just feels like a massive step up for me from the previous shoe in terms of being a more racing kind of centric shoe for me. Uh, and I think Puma's got a lot right here with this shoe. All right, let's move on to daily shoes now. Uh, we. It's tricky. Could we have a daily shoe category and an all-rounder category? Nick, what is the difference between, or what is the difference that we give for daily <laughs> shoes and all-rounder shoes? Well, the problem is that for me, there isn't much of a difference, I guess is the problem. <laughs> but uh, I, I like to use all-rounder shoes as daily shoes. But I think all-rounder shoes are talking more like things, you know, on the super trainer, but shoes that you can, you can use for everything, so including fast running. And then I think for daily shoes, people would probably more think of a slightly more cushioned feel, as in your daily runs are often very easy. It tends to, I mean, but it is a bit of a... Uh, it's, it's a tough distinction, but I guess they're probably slightly more cushioned than all rounders. All rounders probably have a bit more of an edge to them if you are going to use them for fast runs. You can kind of use an all rounder as a daily. You can't necessarily use all dailies as all rounders. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely explained. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well, clear as mud. I picked the same shoe in both categories, so I don't know why you asked me. <laughs> right, well, I, 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 this is good. This is a good explanation of it. We talked uh, in the in the podcast about the Mizuno Neo Vista and the Super Blast Two. I put the Neo Vista in daily, and Super Blast Two in all rounder. I put Neo Vista in all rounder. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, you're an anomaly. You're just you're confusing this process. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's my fault. I think it's a confusing confusing section of categories. Although I, I guess this is the whole point is that people might use shoes for different things anyway. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind it's of what, the, what constitutes an all-rounder for Nick might not be the same for Tom. So it's all good. Yeah, yeah it's fine. It's just the problem is that then we pick three and then people get confused. But it's fine we do our individual picks. But I, I think there's a lot of crossover, basically, put it that way. But I think what we don't have in our daily trainers, because none of us really do this, is we don't put in something, of what we call a cushion shoe, which is another category. So yeah. if, we, if a shoe we think is completely easy day focused, very cushioned and all that, lots of people that is a daily trainer, but on our channel it kind of isn't because we like a shoe that has a little bit more versatility than those very classic cushion shoes like the Asics Gel Nimbus, for example. Mm-hmm. Okay, so some of the shoes that we've got in this category are the Asics Gel Nimbus, Socony and Dolphin Speed Four has cropped up. Yeah, so that's an all rounder, isn't it? Let's be honest. We should probably take I it think, out of this category. I think yeah. that is an all rounder. Yeah, <laughs> this is good. We're actually just do, having a, basically a meeting. I think we, we have to give it, I think we have to give it two awards in the past, but maybe we should just we should change it up then. Mm. All right then. So what about the New Balance Rebel V Four? Yeah, it's a really, really good shoe. Yeah, I, I, I think that I would class that as a daily shoe. Yeah. As yeah. To I, get it, I think a lot of people disagree because they wouldn't say it's cushioned enough, but I agree it's a daily shoe. I do think it's quite cushioned, though. I, I so. Personally, for me, I think on the easier stuff, I don't think it, it sits that well, the easier stuff, compared to some of the other shoes we're talking about here. But I think in terms of you want a more up-tempo, faster, focused daily train, I think absolutely. But me personally... I found it really wants you to run a little bit more up tempo in that shoe. Um, that's kind of just been my experience of it. So, um, yeah, definitely. We should just put the list out. When we try and explain it, we, we can do it ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we'll put, we'll put uh, s- some of these shoes in the comments and then uh, any of the uh, viewers or listeners can comment and say what they think. <laughs> Yeah, well, just like, debate about it because I, yeah. I completely I disagree. I, I put the speed four because I use the speed four for a lot of my easy miles as well. <laughs> great easy, great easy run <laughs> shoe. Really good so daily training. I find it. Yeah, I find it cushioned. Get rid of the category. Get, get, yeah. get rid of the category. Up until about three minutes ago, the speed four is going to win this because me and Kieran both put number one. <laughs> yeah. 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 How would how would you put these in a rotation then? So race shoes quite obvious in a rotation. Uh, cushion shoes quite obvious in a rotation. What are the daily and all rounder shoes in a rotation? Well, I think we. I think we basically, I think what we should do is we should call the daily <laughs> the shoe that you would have in a rotation, maybe. And then your round would be for someone who doesn't buy a rotation. I, yeah, see, I the, think oh, yeah, I that's, like that. okay, that's yeah. quite good. Yeah. The way the all rounder for me is, is like if you could only have, in a way, one if you shoe. had like one shoe, yeah. this thing can do, you know, you, I, I could rate, if I had to, I'd race a marathon in the speed for, uh, you know, it's like it can do a good range. And if you're only going to buy one shoe, Mm. The all-rounder sort of ticks most of those boxes. Not all of them perfectly, but... The problem yeah. remains that when we did our rotations video, we both picked the Speed 4 as our daily trainer. Yeah. <laughs> but, so I guess we could we could try and separate it like that. Yeah, I think it's... If you don't have a rotation... So, for example, in dailies, I could put two shoes from my rotation in because the Puma Velocity Nitro 3 
would be a very good daily trader. I would, I would use it daily. The speed four, I'd also use kind of daily. But I think they're both examples of different kinds of daily trainers. But we could maybe say, if one's very all roundery, let's let's save it for all rounders. Okay. <laughs> so, any other options we've got in this category are Hocker Max Six. Beautiful daily trainer, that. Beautiful daily yeah. trainer. Hocker Mac X. Another mm-hmm. solid, solid daily trainer, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I uh, guess it's a, you know it's a little pep for me. It's a little bit peppier than the than the Max Six, so you need, probably need to like a kind of slightly more responsive ride that's a bit more direct for that kind of daily run than people who want you know with the the caveats of people wanting more cushioning that Nick was talking about in this area. But again, I I quite often do regular miles in the Mac X. Mm. Mm. Okay. So let's do best all-rounders next, because so, that's the hot topic. Uh, so in the best all-rounders, we're seeing uh, Super Blast 2 cropping up. Yeah. Uh, the, well, Speed 4 again. Okay. The Rebel V4 again. Um, so I think we take the Rebel V4 out of that, maybe. Maybe it's not an all-rounder for lots of people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Or daily. It's more a shoe that you would pair with maybe a carbon shoe to go nuts in, and then a more cushion shoe to, I think so. for long yeah, miles. Yeah. So... There okay. we go. That's we've cleared up a little bit. Yeah. Neo Vista, I think, probably is more daily than all rounder. Mm-hmm. I agree with you, Tom. Good. But it is a very good all rounder. <laughs> I, I do think it's one of the three best all rounders I've tested this year. But if we're going to try and clear it up a bit, we can we can do that. I don't mm-hmm. mind. Yeah. Okay. Then the other problem we have, obviously, with the videos is these that sometimes it's not that common. Only one person has tested the shoe. So the Boston 12 is a shoe that would feature very heavily in all-rounders, but only mm. I've tested it. And I need to add that into my algorithm, don't I? Yeah, but it always gets displaced by the algorithm. To it. it always gets like an also mention because Nick likes it, but none of us mm. have tested it. It's tricky one because if, if, <laughs> if, I, if I worked out the uh, algorithm, and when I say the algorithm, I mean me sat there working through a spreadsheet. Uh, if, <laughs> the algorithm if, that I just compute four people's votes. <laughs> if I, if I uh, modified it so it up, up, uh, uplifted things because people only had one of them, then if somebody has a completely rubbish choice, it would be massively uplifted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it wouldn't work. Yeah, it can't be acceptable. So, okay. so that's why <laughs> that 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 does explain why the if people probably probably wonder why you know the Boston doesn't fit because it is a very popular shoe as well. But mm. I um I think that's why uh, it, it, that's the reason. Like I think you guys would probably like it, but we can't mm. we can't can't base anything on that. All Basically, right, all we're saying is Adidas. Can you send us all the Boston? To, yeah, to I mean, it's all agree. <laughs> love from a stone, isn't it? We haven't tested the Adidas <laughs> SL two either, which is supposed to be very good, but. There's a big pile of shoes you have to get through. I'm not, I'm not killing on, myself guys. trying to get other ones. <laughs> got a video All right, let's do an easy one then. Best cushion shoe. There's not going to be loads of debate on Dolphin that Speed one. 4, next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, this is this category has got not many surprises in it. So you've got New Balance 1080 V13, which is definitely a cushion shoe. Definitely. Um, not um, one I love, but is beloved. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brooks Glycerin 21. Great shoe. Definitely a cushion shoe. Uh, on cloud size, first surface seven, which just is it is feels like a cushion shoe. It's not like a max cushion shoe, but I think it's a daily for me. I'm going to say that. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to say it. Okay, that's. I think I'm on the fence with that one. I think you could go either way on that one. Uh, Brooks goes sixteen. You'd probably put that as a daily, wouldn't you? I think that's a it's a cushion daily. Yeah, cushion daily. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh no, they um, don't cross the cushion. <laughs> yeah. just... Puma Magnify Nitro Two. That's definitely a cushion shoe. That's a cushion shoe. <laughs> I think, I think both humans could go in here quite Stop easily. Ride 17 you probably would have used to have been daily, but it's probably moving more towards the world. That's, of that's, I mean, that's the epitome of a cushion daily. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So we're not really getting anywhere with these. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a massive Venn diagram, couldn't we? Would that uh, be a good video? Just a, us drawing a huge Venn diagram? <laughs> what is it? Of you drawing it? We'd all be there, Tom. We'd yeah, all be there. We'd draw the circles. We'd just keep writing more shoes into different things. I think it could work. <laughs> I think it'd be more interesting for us to properly define these categories. <laughs> so you know they are. Men with Venn. <laughs> so that is the job of the uh, the listeners to design our categories for us. Listeners? <laughs> you, think, you think people are any more contrary than all the people? Any more people contrary than us? As everyone's going to comment. They're gonna, it's going to be a, we're gonna have a wild disparity of views coming <laughs> here. Honestly, the only ones we need to know are... What is a daily shoe? What is an all rounder? Cushion shoe, I think, is fine. I think I think you, you can allow for a certain level of actually that might slip into daily, but it is quite a cushion shoe. So I think a lot of the cushion fun. shoes we like are because they have a bit more about them for daily training. Actually, yeah, cushion so, shoes yeah. are there for like slower, easy, comfortable miles. You're not necessarily going to go faster in them. Your sole purpose is comfort and cushioning. Um, so what about the team of Velocity Nitro Three? Tricky on that cushion daily, isn't it? 
Yeah. It's my cushion shoe in my rotation. It's a problem when it, we, we haven't got enough people. <laughs> yeah. well, that's a, that, it's actually a value issue. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, we just we always get away with the Velocity Nitro. Velocity Nitro can easily be in all of these categories, but it gets shoved yeah. into value because it's cheap, <laughs> even though it's like, I think it's better than any of the shoes anyway. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a good point. A lot of the shoes can, can cross over, but they can't mm. all win because it's just because a shoe can cross over the categories doesn't mean it's the best in a category. Yeah, yeah. you know what would really express this? A huge Venn diagram that we're all standing <laughs> around just writing shoes into. Can you... Can you just do that on your own? <laughs> I can. I, I, no. I, fear, I fear we wouldn't publish it. <laughs> we basically need to hire a massive crane with a top-down camera, giant <laughs> circles and Nick with a big pile of shoes just putting them yeah. in different If we sections. could art attack it, Kieran. Drone. Yeah, Tom's, 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 got, Tom's got a drone, right? Got a drone. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's yeah, do it. I can do that. We can make this happen. <laughs> right, let's move this along. Uh, best value shoes. The final category we've got is best value shoes. That one is very easy. It's just a shoe that's really good value. It can be any type of shoe. Uh, it's probably a mixture of being relatively cost effective but also being durable versatile, versatile. you know you know versatile. what a really good versatile shoe would be in my mind an all-rounder <laughs> yeah yeah but all-rounders aren't necessarily cheap are they the best all-rounder is probably not going to be yeah. the, uh, the cheap one cheaper one it's the Puma of Lofty Nitro 3. I mean, the, it's the easier <laughs> yeah. category there is. All right, so... Uh, we really got to stick in it, have we? Listeners, if you've managed to get all the way through this video podcast <laughs> and uh, you have views on what makes up these categories, please comment. Help or, us. Please help us. you have us. access please to <laughs> several large rings and a, and a drone <laughs> and Neil Buchanan, ideally... Yeah, we will. Um, we'll get this done. Yeah, let we us know what you think of these categories. We were originally going to say, "What would you think goes in this? What, what would you pick of these categories?" But considering we need to define the categories, that's probably the most useful thing to get your help on. Actually, you know, when I we just did the list and we had all the picks, and I said maybe we should discuss this. We should never have discussed it. We should have just got the picks. We actually, the picks were fine. Yeah. 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 Good to know for next year. All right. All right. Well. Um, yeah. We'll. Uh, well, we've got to sort it out the next week or so. So uh, I've got to edit the video. <laughs> we have to put the link into this uh, for all the people who have complaints, uh, rightly. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of confused about whether which bit of this is the meeting and which bit is the video that's going to go out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's or, a real time saver if we just I mean, do the meeting, the podcast. Yeah. This is all going out. This is all going out. This is, this is like yeah, a behind the scenes. Um, behind the scenes, yeah, yeah. This is how the sausage yes. is made. Yeah. And you can yeah, see it. You see why it turns out like it does. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, uh, glad we cleared all that up. Uh, so uh, in the next uh, few weeks we will be releasing our full guide to the best running shoes you know what the first comment is going to be why isn't the Sockney Endorphin Speed the best daily trainer mm. Mm. Yeah, second pretty, comment pretty... really like Tom's new doors yeah. <laughs> third <laughs> comment Nick always doors. talks about the Puma Velocity Nitro 3 that is true oh, yeah. fourth <laughs> comment would be Kieran's t-shirt <laughs> uh, yeah, what's wrong yeah. with this <laughs> <laughs> alright uh, I think that'll do us for now yeah. <laughs> right. all, all gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we've got some work to do. Right. I'll see you guys. Oh later. my god, I'm sweating so bad. All right. That's it from us. Thanks a lot for watching this preview chat about our best running shoes guide. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the little bell, and if you click in the caption, you can go to the podcast. And if you like it, please leave a review or give us a rating or a like or whatever it is on the podcast platform that you use. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time. Just